Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another Unity tutorial where we do a 2D game that is a clone of Flappy Bird. When we left things off, we are having a little bit of issues because we had to kind of rewrite how our bird controls work uh, in response to the fact that the 2D physics system in Unity does not work the same way as the 3D physics system, and it's caught me off guard. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and rip out everything from this fixed update function to start off with. Okay, we're going to start from scratch here, and then we are going to fit in... So let's, let's review. Our player bird here has a 2D collider, which is not a trigger, it's an actual collider. It's got a rigid body, which is not kinematic, it's an actual rigid body. So what we want to do in our fixed update, let's see what were to happen if on our rigid body 2D, if we we're supposed to add, say add a force, oh it wants a 2D force. That's part of the confusion. So let's say we've got a vector 2 dot up times 100. And we're just going to hit play and see if the bird goes up or down. It goes up very fast. Okay, that's exactly what I was hoping for. And if we set it to 10, it should be just enough to overcome the physics gravity. And it goes up ever so slightly. And faster and faster and faster. All right, that's something. The fact that we're using real physics here might mean it's not going to be entirely accurate to the Flappy Bird experience, but short of going with more complicated collision detection, we're just going to have to grit our teeth and bear it. Um, well, I say that. Nah, we're fine. So what we really want, first of all, is we've got our forward speed. Let me remove the publics out of here. And the, the max speed no longer exists, and the flap velocity, flap speed, it's actually flap force, but let's, let's pretend that that's what it is. I'm going to set it to 12. So every round, we want a vector 2 dot forward, dot right, right, to be equal to our forward speed, and that is consistent. Uh, or is it? Yes. Is there drag? There is. We want some linear drag to kick in, maybe a 1. Because we don't want it to exceed what we're thinking. So let's actually go ahead and add an up back in. We're going to get our flap speed to be 9.8F just to cancel out gravity for now. Actually, I could turn the gravity scale to nothing. Oops. Flap speed. There we go. We're moving forward. We are indeed moving forward at what appears to be a reasonable rate. I think the linear drag is, is canceling things out very nicely there. Okay, good. So the next thing we want is if did flap. If did flap, then we are going to add a upwards uh, force. We're going to set it to false like that. The flap speed is definitely not going to be big enough now because we actually want to go up. So we'll go ahead and go with, say, 15 and see how that goes. And right. And the problem is still that it's not an impulse. Can we do rigid body dot impulse? Because it's only adding it on one frame, which is part of what's messing things up. 500. Well, Might almost be okay. Definitely a bit rough though. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut the gravity scale to like a quarter and then drop this down by a quarter as well. Should make it a little bit more manageable there. Goes down less fast, goes up a little faster. Not quite fast enough though. A thousand, oops, or a hundred, sorry. think we actually want a little bit more downwards. There. All right. I, I, I feel like that's halfway decent. Okay, good. Now we've lost the, the, the turning thing. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, if rigid body 2D, 2D dot uh, velocity dot y is less than zero 
then we want to um, I lost that code completely didn't I um, float angle equals math f dot lerp from 0 to minus 90 uh, this uh, negative this and then I don't know some we'll put in some number there where we want to hit the 90 degree and then we want uh, the problem is the angle all the forces hopefully these are in world coordinates crossing my fingers so rigid body dot no we don't want to torque let's let's modify the rotation directly and cross our fingers that it doesn't break everything dot rotation equals quaternion dot Euler zero zero angle let's see what that does for us oh and then otherwise we should actually want to go oh, that looks pretty damn good actually um ooh okay there's the problem that when it bounces it doesn't look quite right So, okay, if it's bigger than zero, then you can set the rotation to just be zero. There, so now even in the case where it's zero, when it's actually zero, when we're lying on the ground, we'll be face down. Will that look right? Well, actually, I suppose when we die, it's going to look different regardless, so. Now, what is happening with my background all of a sudden? Was this not working? Oh, the background's actually moving too fast. <laughs> hmm. It's a little wacky. We may have to... I hate the fact that we're going to have to rewrite how our, our screen movement and everything works in response to stuff it looks fine there but then if we happen to crash land then it no longer looks right so we're gonna have to have the background be aware of what the bird is doing you know for now I'm gonna set the background speed to be zero so it'll be exactly we'll have no parallax effect at all that way if we crash we just sort of stop moving and everything's kind of sort of not right See, I like the occasional bounce. You, know, you can change the physics settings in a few different ways. Wow, it's really got crappy collision detection here. It, like, sinks in. Why are you doing that? Wow, this 2D8 collision engine sucks. Note to self, when doing this in the future, just use 3D physics. Save yourself a lot of trouble. Okay. Um, I guess I might be able to mess with some iterations here or something. Ah, I don't know. We'll leave it as is. It'll be good enough for government work. I guess when we hit, we're going to die anyway. And so with that in mind, let's talk about um, our animations. So we currently have an animation here. Where's Okay, so there's the animator. This is my actual logic, right? Um, but then I also have animation, which I can dock here. And my player bird animation here. There we go. So it has this bird flapping animation going on. Let's move the scene view to down below here and zoom in on it. Check the animation. Hit play. There we go. So there's the animation of the bird flapping, right? Excellent. Groovy. But we should probably have an idle animation as well. So I'm going to create a new clip called bird idle, which is... pretty much just going to have the neutral flap. So bird idle. We want to find the neutral flap position. Was that the 12? No, the 18? Yes. So just bring that in there. And that's all it should be. If we hit play, well, there's nothing. There are no frames there. That's exactly what we want. OK, bird flapping, bird idle. Good. So in our animate her, there we go, we've got a new animation. So we're actually going to set the bird idle to be the default. And then what we want to do is transfer from one to the other. So we're going to create a trigger called do flap. 
And we're going to make a transition from idle to flapping when do flap occurs. And then we're going to make a transition back, which will automatically fire when the bird flapping animation is done. So now if we were to hit, um, if we were to hit play here, and we watch our bird, nothing's happening. And if we trigger the do flap, it's going to flap once and then go right back to being idle. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. So now what we have to do is actually trigger this trigger. That sounds silly, but there it is. So in the bird movement script, if did flap, we're going to add force. We're also, and we need to grab the animator, which we don't have. So uh, we want animator, animator, like that. Animator equals get component, animator, like so. And then animator dot trigger, set trigger. And we can set it by ID or by string. So we're going to set the trigger do flap. So now, if we hit play, watch our bird, and I hit space, the whole system hangs. Oh, I'm so happy. This 2D engine in Unity 3D is fantastic. Uh, let's close the window. All right, that doesn't work. Let's force quit Unity. I love this so much. I'm so happy. I can't even tell you guys. Oh, there we go. Hold on. Save. Now it's quitting. Okay, it might have just been a one-off fluke. Let's try that again. Check the code. I don't have the code open. Where's my bird? Right over here. Open up the bird movement. I've got my script. Maybe, okay, let's try setting the animator trigger right here in the update instead. Hit play. I'm going to stop. Hit play. Okay. No. Again with the hang on the trigger. Why? It feels like it's it's somehow falling into some sort of infinite loop, but that makes no sense whatsoever. All right, let's hit play this way. Do flap. It should be resetting this trigger. Play, play bird. Something is double plus ungood. Remove this parameter. Delete. Add parameter. Let's use a boolean instead. Called do flap. When do flap is true, do jump to there. So set boolean. This is the old way of doing it before the triggers came in here. You'd set the boolean to true. You do that once, and then like on the next frame, you just set it to false. You could check it first, but well, what the hell? We'll do that. If animator animator dot oh is it because the animator is here instead of here? Am I trying to set something on a null? Hang on, let's let's back out of here for a sec. Um. Let's not do anything with the animator. If animator equals no debug dot log error didn't find animator. We don't have any animation down here. Good, okay. We're gonna hit play. Didn't find animator, that's the problem. So we actually want to go transform dot get component in children animator <laughs> all right so now if we hit play we should no longer get an error that is indeed true okay and with that in mind let's remove this delete add trigger do flap when do flap triggers go to here okay we're back to where it should be Let's actually just run this without the script. 
I'm going to set the trigger. Excellent. Looking good. Okay, feeling good about that. Now, and we didn't get an error. Yes, that's true. So, I don't want to do it here. I want to wait until we actually do the flap. So, I would like to ideally set trigger, do flap. No need to send a true. Hit the button. There we are. Good stuff. So now we just we just give a little flap. A little flap every time. Now, I think maybe we don't want to start aiming down right away. We want a little delay before we, we start aiming downwards. So what I'm going to do after we do this, I'm going to remove like minus 0.2f. Just going to give it a little bit of a tendency to stay closer to zero. No, that's no good. Divide it by more stuff, maybe. I just don't want it to start facing down. Mm, then it... No, let's remove this. Greater than negative 0.25f. Then it'll be vertical or horizontal. But then it starts to drop right away. You know what? Screw it. Let's not mess with it. Okay. That way the... Uh, what? Greater than zero. That way the, the angling is a very clear indication of when you're going down at all. Thump. Which should insta-kill you. We'll get to that soon. Actually, we could get to that right away. Uh, player bird over here, we're going to do something like dies on collision. If you collide against anything, you die. What does dying mean? Well, right now, not a whole hell of a lot, other than playing another animation. So, we will go, um, actually, you know what, let's let's remove this. And let's get rid of the uh, dies on collision. We'll just add it to, to player, to bird movement. Just because it's slightly easier. So, we will go void on collision, enter 2D. Um, collision... 2D collision. What's going to happen? So we want new animation. Okay. So on our bird graphics, we're going to create a new clip called bird death. And all this is going to do is switch our image. There we go. To the dead one. Like so. So then we go back to the animator. We've got a bird death over here. And trigger death. So we're going to make a transition to death, which is going to transition when death trigger is true. And then we're just going to stay there. So on collision enter, we are going to animator set trigger death. And what we're going to do Let's have a boolean here. Bool dead equals false. So on our uh, physics update, if dead, return. And just realize we're not flapping while we're moving forward. Should we actually be flapping constantly? Instead of just when we tap? I don't know, there's something to be said about just sort of floating here. Okay. We are... Oh. Dead equals true. I'm still not happy with the way it turns down. I would like... Hmm, I don't know what I want. It definitely does turn down too fast, though. Uh, oh, we were doing a time a divided by two before. Let's go. What, what happens with the divided by four? Is that like no? Because we're, we never reach full verticality. Three. Maybe three is a happy medium I'm looking for. Bump. 
That's... It's not too shabby. Thump. Well, this time it just face-planted completely. It would be nice if it had a little bit more bounce. One of the things we could do... To get a, maybe a little bit more action here. Instead of using a box collider 2D. Or instead of using a box collider, I should say. What if we use a sphere collider? Or I guess it's probably called a circle collider. So then we get a nice little bit of roll. Yeah, that's got some potential. Thump. I like it. Bam. There, I think that works. Um, good, all right, so we've got a death, great. So the next thing we're gonna do on the next video is we're going to add pipes to collide with which is really the core of the game. And then we're gonna add some scorekeeping. And, well, that's pretty much it. I suppose maybe a little start screen and a respawn ability. Because really the, the thing with this game is it is rather hard, but a lot of the appeal comes to the fact that when you die, you do instantly respawn. And there's a lot to be said for that. Also would like to fix the, uh, the background at some point to be a little bit more happy making. The background will simply have to be smarter. It's gonna have to check the player, check to see if the player is moving forward. And then, um, Basically, just whatever the velocity of the player is, that velocity, less 10%, is what the background should be doing. Just to do the parallax effect. So, actually, we'll do that now. Why not? Since I just described exactly what I want to do. So, the ground mover here, uh, the speed is irrelevant. What we want to do, just like the camera, we want to... Well, what do we want to do? Let's see. We want to track the player. We want to grab the player in the start. Good. We don't need to track an offset. And then in fixed update here, what we want to do is find the player. Actually, we don't want the transform. We want the rigid body 2D of the player. Yes, I think. I think. Dot rigid body 2D. Because then player dot velocity dot x we want um, float velocity to be equal to player velocity dot x times 0.9f we're moving almost as fast as the player but not quite so then our own transform dot position equals transform dot position plus vector 3 dot right times velocity times time dot delta time is that really all it's going to take yeah the clouds are moving basically in in place of the player but not quite i think they're moving a little too close to the player let's slow them down a little bit here there we go makes the, the uh, movement more obvious, but clearly not at the same speed as the ground itself. I think I might like add to add, blah, blah, blah. I think I might like to add some pebbles or something in the ground. You know, I think we're very close to getting something that feels aesthetically very pleasing here. I like it. Okay, see you next time we add pipes.